So your watershed is going to be that drainage basin or where how the water flows from the highest peak to the lowest peak within your watershed um, or an area. And let's just go real quick through how water cycles from evaporation. So I'm going to pull a little X where I'm going to start and take you guys really quick through the cycle and kind of highlight the parts that really impact surface water and groundwater because that's what we're going to focus on today. So the sun heats up water. So ocean is a great example of surface water. And then the water becomes water vapor and you can see it moves up. And when it hits a certain point in the atmosphere, it gets really cold. That causes the water vapor to condense in the clouds. So that's your condensation. We move over here and eventually once those clouds become saturated, they'll start to fall to the earth as rain, which you guys can see heads down this way. And then precipitation can be rain, it can be snow. And once that precipitation hits the ground, there's a couple of things or different ways that it can go. Uh, if it is hitting the ground and actually goes into the ground and down into the under layers or below the surface of the earth, that's what we call infiltration. Uh, there's various terms. Sometimes you might hear percolation or sorry, percolating like the coffee pots um, or seepage, but basically the water is going from the surface layer down into the groundwater. The other route it can follow is it goes into runoff. So runoff, it can go runoff into a stream, it can run off into the ocean. Um, there's also impervious surfaces. Impervious means that water cannot penetrate it. So a lot of the times if you have an impervious surface like a road or cement, that will also run off into a local waterway. And then the last thing that we haven't mentioned, I'm going to put a little star, uh, evapotranspiration or transpiration is when you have water vapor um, released by trees, which is part of photosynthesis and goes up into the atmosphere, which brings us back to condensation. Okay, so surface water, groundwater. This is not going to be difficult. It's actually really straightforward. Surface water is water that's on the surface of the earth or on the ground. Groundwater is water that has penetrated into the soil, into uh, whatever ground you're standing on, and actually goes down into what we will call the water table or aquifers. We'll get into that in a little bit. But surface water, you can see there's surface water right there. Examples of surface water are rivers, oceans, streams, seas, lakes, springs. Uh, you guys could probably name some things that I haven't put. I think I missed creeks. Surface water is recharged by precipitation runoff, snow and ice melting, or springs that can come up from groundwater. This is a really important thing to know. This is one of the connections that connect groundwater and surface water. So if you've ever heard of a spring-fed lake, that is the connection where a spring comes up from the groundwater and actually supplies the stream or the lake with its water source. And then the other type of water we're talking about is groundwater. So again, that's the water that has penetrated into the ground itself. The primary example of groundwater is called an aquifer. An aquifer is basically a giant underground lake. A uh, common way of it being described as a large underground reservoir. Uh, and the way that that water gets down is by infiltration, which we talked about up in the water cycle. So the two types of aquifers are unconfined 
and confined. Confined aquifers have what we call impervious boundaries or boundaries where water isn't able to get through the bedrock. So these aquifers are usually found deep underground and you usually have rock here. And then there's usually a layer of rock underneath. This water is hard to access and is usually really deep underground. And then you also have your confined, unconfined aquifers, which again is this one near the top. This is usually located just below the surface and the top boundary is what we call the water table. The water table is how high the water comes underground. These unconfined aquifers usually give water to rivers and streams. Okay, so recharge rate again is how fast the water is going to penetrate or permeate from the surface into the ground. Three things that primarily affect the recharge rate are going to be the amount of water or the amount of precipitation that's falling, uh, the permeability. So you guys hopefully think back to when we had the gravel, the sand, and you guys were pouring water down into the permeable tubes and saw how fast the water ran through that those different forms of soil. Um, and that is something that can affect how fast water permeates through the soil or through the bedrock when you get down low enough. And then there's also the level of the water table. Okay, so this is the big concept that we've been working towards. The water table is, if you look in the diagram here, let me pick a better color that you guys can see. Right there, that's the water table. And the water table is the level at which the ground is saturated or soaked with water. So you guys can see you have your surface in that diagram and then you have a few feet or a few inches down, you have the unsaturated zone. So this is what land that has water, but it's not saturated. So it's not soaked through with water. So if you think of like a washcloth, you know, if you have a washcloth and you wring it out and it's just a little damp, that's like your unsaturated zone. Now, if you take a washcloth or even a sponge and completely soak it full of water and it's dripping, that's what the saturated zone is. It's just completely soaked up with water. So the water table is kind of that top boundary of that saturated zone. And underneath that, you'll find groundwater. So you guys can see the diagram there. The water level or the water table, when we're talking about groundwater, is going to be the top of that saturated zone. But let me point out, when you go into the stream over here, the water table is at the same level of surface water. So the water table is at the top of any body of water, so the top of a river, top of a lake. But when we start moving into the ground itself, that's when it depends on that satur saturation zone. Hey guys, just to review, this is the rural area and urban area well models that you guys were supposed to look at last Friday. So as you guys can see, I've got the rural area with two wells right now. And if you just look at the rural area, you guys can see that the water from the surface is able to penetrate down. The water table drops where you see the two wells because that water is getting pumped to the surface and used. But it's able to recharge that aquifer because the water from the surface is able to penetrate down and keep recharging. So again, your recharge rate is just how long it takes for the water to permeate back down into those aquifers. I'm going to stop this for a second and set up the urban side and show you guys that difference. As you guys can see on this model, I put two wells in the urban zone. Now the water that is pouring or falling into the urban area that water is not permeating down. 
That's because you have a lot of impermeable surfaces like roads and cement. So a lot of that gets run off into local streams. In your area, all of the water that rains down generally gets put down into the sewer system when it runs off from the streets or the sidewalks. And that water goes down into what we call the storm, the storm water system. And that storm water generally flows out either straight into the Skokie River or into Lake Michigan. As you guys can see in this urban system, there are two wells, just like if there were in the rural. There would actually be more wells because there's a much larger population in urban areas than rural areas. You guys can see that the water from the city is being run off into a permeable area that's just outside the city. And then the water that gets into that permeable area is recharging the aquifer, but it is recharging at a much slower rate than what we saw in the rural area because there's just not enough water getting through that concrete and asphalt that is covering over the city. So the water supply for the city is going to go down a lot faster. So you have two main factors that cause that. The impermeable surfaces that don't allow the water level to recharge. And then you also have a much larger population that's using a lot more water. So that's why we also have flooding in cities. Because the water isn't absorbed by the ground naturally, it's got to run off. And Usually, as I said, it's going to run off into the sewer system, and those sewer systems generally go directly into waterways. If your sewer systems can't keep up with the capacity of rain, which we've seen several times over the last couple of years with some severe flooding around the Des Plaines River, around the Skokie River, and even Lake Michigan levels coming up, this is what's causing it. As you guys can see, those impermeable surfaces play a big role role in not just your recharge rate, but where your water is going. All right, so the 